Welcome back to our Napoleon series, which at this point is jumping all over the place in terms of timeline. This brand new video from Epic History TV, Napoleon's First Campaign, Part 3. Um, they changed the title up a little bit, actually, because the first two were Napoleon in Italy, I believe. Yeah, it was Napoleon in Italy, Part 1, The Little Corporal, but guess it did better for the thumbnail. Anyways, if you haven't checked out the other videos, I'm going through every single one of Epic History TV's Napoleon videos. I'll leave a link in the top right here for the playlist where you can go check out those ones. And let's keep going with this one. If I remember correctly, Napoleon at this point is chasing the general that he just defeated. I believe it was around, it was, it was in the Alps if I remember correctly, or it was near the Alps. And now he's going to chase him back into Austria. So whether this is the final part, whether there'll be a part four, I don't know and we'll find out. So if you haven't already yet, please remember to like, up, comment, subscribe. Let's get into it. EMF Productions Collaboration. In 1796, at the height of the French Revolutionary Wars, a young French general took charge of a ragged, demoralized army in Northern Italy. It was his first command. Many expected him to fail. Instead, in just one month, he won his first brilliant campaign. Yep. With astonishing self-confidence, boldness and energy, he led his army to victory after victory. Transforming the war in Europe, winning praise from a grateful republic, and forging a legend. This is the story of Napoleon Bonaparte's first campaign. I love this And the dawn so of a new age. Oh, I love Epic History TV. So August good. 1796. The war between France's infant republic and the coalition seems to be tipping in France's favor. In the Vendée, General Osh has brought the three-year royalist revolt to an end. This appalling civil war has cost an estimated 165,000 lives and is the bloodiest wow. chapter of the French Revolution. I'm curious, actually. This is not a topic of, of history I'm terribly familiar with, but I know the casualties in the American Civil War were really, really high. But I'm curious, is, is that that seems like really, really high casualty totals for the, for the, uh, for the French Civil War here, 165,000. I'm curious, like, how much more the American Revolution was. I want to say half a million, maybe 600,000, but still, 165,000. I didn't know the totals were that high. Bourbon Spain allies with France. They will combine forces against their common enemy, hmm. Great Britain. Yep. In Germany, the armies of General Jourdan and General Moreau have crossed the Rhine and are advancing on Vienna. While in Italy, Napoleon's stunning victory at Castiglione has sent the Austrians scurrying back to the Tyrol. Napoleon can now resume his siege of Mantua, the key to Italy. Mm, right, now I remember. Yes. But he'll have to start over. The Austrians have used the interlude to drag away his heavy guns and demolish his siege works. In summer, the Whoa. pestilential marshes that surround the city are lethal. This is a cool new visual. The Austrian garrison has been decimated by disease, mostly malaria. General Serrurier, commanding the French siege, also contracts the disease. He returns to France to recover and is replaced by General Sauge. Sickness and a shortage of equipment once more plague the French army in Italy. Even the heroic General Massena asks to be replaced, citing ill health and exhaustion. Napoleon rejects his request. Ooh. Hmm. To be fair though, he's one of the best commanders here. So. Despite these problems, the Directory in Paris orders Napoleon to attack as part of a grand strategic offensive against Austria. He is to break through to Innsbruck, join forces with Moreau's Army of the Rhine, then together invade Austria and force Emperor Francis to sue for peace. 
And uh, just a little spoiler here, but this would not be the first time that uh, Napoleon, if this plan is successful here, no spoilers, obviously, uh, but this would not be the first time that, uh, that Napoleon would end up in Vienna. And that's the part where we're up to at this point. I think it's like eight, video eight of 23. What's interesting, though, here is here's Charles. Charles is probably, I would argue, the greatest rival to Napoleon. The amount of times that they face each other in battle and that Charles will eventually get the best of Napoleon, it's kind of cool to think that they could have met those decades before. I think this is in 1793, I think, maybe 1791. Still, it could have been. It's a cool idea to think if Charles and, and, and Napoleon had met before, but eh. Napoleon faces an enemy of roughly equal size. So he plans to use speed and concentration of force to fall upon Austrian troops in the Adige Valley. And one thing I want to note here is that this terrain is very, very difficult. Even I was, plan I was planning on doing a bike trip through this, uh, through Zutirol, and man, the mountains here and the, the, the rough terrain is, is, I mean, it's beautiful, but I can't imagine marching a 30,000 strong army through this territory here. And clear the path northwards. I mean, look at it. His opponent, Austrian Field Marshal von Wurmser, is under immense pressure to relieve Mantua. His staff believe that recent fighting has left the French army shattered and incapable of offensive operations. So the Austrians plan to make their own advance. Rather than try to force his way past French troops in the Adige Valley, Wurmser will keep Davidovich in a defensive role, hmm. while he leads a wide outflanking march via the Brenta Valley and Bassano to reach Mantua from the east. There he will link up with its garrison. And when Napoleon comes south to face him, he will be caught between two Austrian armies. Okay. That's not gonna work out. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Curio. Go check out Curiosity Stream. Go 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 check out um, the service. Help Epic History TV make them more money. Become a patron. All that good stuff. This channel is amazing. <laughs> the Austrians begin their advance on the first of September. Sorry, seventeen ninety six. Apologies. French forces begin their advance the following day. Massena pushes up the Adige Valley, with Augereau taking a tougher, mountainous route on his right. General Vaubois marches around Lake Garda to join them, with one brigade crossing by boat. Hmm, interesting. The forward Austrian outposts are driven in. And by the 4th, three French divisions are converging on Davidovich's heavily outnumbered force, near Rovereto. General Victor leads the main attack straight up the road, driving Man. back the enemy centre. Chaos of all this. Meanwhile, French light infantry swarm up the sides of the valley to outflank the enemy. It's a tactic the French will use again and again to force the Austrians out of strong positions in the narrow passes. The Austrians are driven up the valley towards Davidovich's main camp at Caliano. As Napoleon remarks, this position should have been impregnable. Sheer mountains either side of a valley floor that's just yeah. a few hundred yards wide. A small and yet, castle and wall add to the formidable natural defences. But its defence has been left to a single, shaken Austrian regiment, which is given no time to prepare. When the French hit them with speed and numbers, they give way. Wow. Massena's troops break through to the main Austrian camp, where soldiers, expecting a much longer respite, are preparing dinner. No. <laughs> the arrival of the French oh, sparks no. chaos and confusion. Yep. The Austrian escape route is immediately jammed with fleeing troops, wagons and guns. Oh my. The French round up around 3,000 uh. prisoners, alongside 25 guns and seven standards. 
Napoleon had thought that he faced the whole Austrian army around Trento. But now, speaking with prisoners and locals, he learns that Wurmser and half his army have set off down the Brenta Valley. Here he goes. Destination unknown. With typical speed and decisiveness, Napoleon tears up the plan to join Moreau at Innsbruck and orders a pursuit. No. If he can catch and destroy Wurmser before he reaches safety, the war in Italy will be won. Wow. So he, di so he directly disobeys an order from higher command to go chase after the enemy because he believes it will end the war. That's incredible. That's so cool. If the enemy waits for me, there will be a battle which will, which will decide the fate of this whole country. It's so cool. When Wurmser receives news of the fiasco at Caliano, his troops are already strung out along the Brenta Valley, with his vanguard approaching Vicenza. There is nothing to gain by turning back. He orders Davidovich to hold the passes north, assuming they are Napoleon's objective, and pushes on to Mantua. But Napoleon is not going north. He orders Vaubois to pursue Davidovich and keep him blocked in, while Augereau's division leads the rest of the army down the narrow, funnel-like Brenta Valley in pursuit of the Austrians. The army of Italy is brimming with confidence and momentum, and marches much faster than the Austrians. A small force at Levico offers token resistance before it's bundled down the Brenta Valley. The next day, French light infantry rout a 3,000-strong Austrian rearguard at Primolano, taking most just... of them prisoner. Bam! Right Wurmser through! Wurmser decides to make another stand at Bassano, where the valley opens into flat plains. With Colonel Lann leading the charge, the Austrians are driven back, then chased into town by Murat's cavalry. Amid panic, chaos and blocked roads, the French take another 2,000 prisoners, wow. including an Austrian 5, general prisoners and so 30 guns. Wurmser is in disarray, down to 12,000 men, yep. outnumbered two to one, and with part of up. his force retreating in the wrong direction towards oh. Trieste. <laughs> his only hope okay. is to reach Mantua. Which the two armies are in a wow, foot race, hundreds of kilometers away. but for the first time in the campaign, Austrian soldiers outmarch their exhausted French counterparts. Wurmser leaves a small garrison at the fortress of Legnago to slow Augereau's pursuit. Forging ahead, Massena manages to block the Austrians' path at Cherea. But General Ott makes a determined attack and clears the road, taking 700 French prisoners and seven guns. It is a rare defeat for Massena. Hmm. With the help of a local informant, Wurmser then finds an intact, unguarded bridge across the Tione River ah, okay. and reaches the outskirts of Mantua on the 13th of September. His army has been saved from destruction by the skin of its teeth. Yep. Two days, all it took. Yeah, I don't blame him. I mean, his troops have marched so far, their plans have been ruined. Again, the idea here, <laughs> as you just watched, right, the idea here was to cut Napoleon off and to destroy him. And yet they're completely on their coattails, marching back through these mountain paths, which just, just go on Google Maps and go look through those mountain terrain now. Obviously, there's modern roads there and stuff nowadays, but imagine that back in 1796, right? Gets to his garrison, which he's supposed to be saving, and now the French are going to try and siege it. Pfft. Actually, they're already sieging it, so now there will be even more troops to commit to it. Napoleon has visuals. failed to prevent Wurmser reaching Mantua. 
but he knows that if he can bottle him up inside the city, it will put intolerable strain on its supplies. Yep. For that reason, Wormser wants to keep his army outside the city walls, free to maneuver, and, crucially, forage for supplies in the surrounding country. The next morning, as Augereau accepts the surrender of the Austrian garrison at Legnago, Massena tries a surprise attack at Dewey Castelli. Hmm. But it's overambitious. His men have not had time to recover from their long march, and the Austrians fight bravely. The following day, Napoleon launches a much larger, coordinated attack. Sauge's division advances on the right. His troops are soon in heavy fighting with Ott's brigade, around the Villa La Favorita. Augereau's division, under temporary command of General Bonn, advances along the Mincho River, trying to turn the Austrian right flank. When Wormser sends reserves from his center to strengthen both flanks, Massena's concealed division Ooh. launches its attack. Ooh. Victor and Rampon lead the way with their veteran demi-brigades. Austrian cavalry hurl themselves at the French, but are beaten off. Heavy fighting rages on the outskirts of Mantua for much of the afternoon. Finally, Wormser's center begins to crumble, and the French take San Giorgio. What do they do with the bridge? Much though? of the Austrian right wing is cut off. Many are forced to surrender, while others flee into the lake. Ooh. With the Austrian line shattered, Wormser orders his men to fall back to the safety of Mantua's citadel. Every single one of these battles, the French. I think throughout this entire campaign, the French, despite the fact that these were the terrible troops, right? These were the troops that were left over, conscripts, you know, the, the army that was supposed to fail. The Austrians have taken three times or four times or more casualties for every single battle that they face here. Astounding. I mean, and actually one thing I want to comment to is that his retreat, that he just barely made it, actually kind of reminds me of Napoleon's retreat that he would later do through Russia, where the Russians are just pursuing him and Napoleon just barely makes it before being encircled and cut off and ultimately destroyed, right? So, interesting parallels there, I think. The troops that were to have rescued Mantua are now trapped alongside Mantua, its garrison. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> By early October, the French have cut off the city and resumed their siege. Conditions inside Mantua deteriorate rapidly. Mm -hmm. Disease, wounds and malnutrition kill on average nearly a hundred Austrian soldiers every day for six weeks. And not to speak of the civilians. Civilians are reduced well. to eating rats and horses. Oof. Napoleon, yeah. meanwhile, returns to Milan sending his aide-de-camp, Major Marmont, to Paris to present 22 captured Austrian standards to the Directory. But elsewhere, the war has not been going so well for France. Archduke Charles, younger brother of the Emperor Francis, has defeated General Jourdan's army twice in two weeks. We'll hear a lot more from him it later. It and General Moreau's Army of the Rhine are forced to retreat back to the frontier. These setbacks mean Napoleon will get very few of the reinforcements he's so urgently requested. He and his men are exhausted. Many of them are sick. They must contain an enormous and increasingly desperate garrison in Mantua with the certain knowledge that the Austrians will try again soon to save the city. And there are diplomatic concerns which also trouble Napoleon. In Rome, the Pope stirs animosity against the French, 
citing their treatment of the Catholic Church in the territories they administer. Mm -hmm. These now include the Cispadane Republic, formed in part from the Duchy of Modena, which Napoleon has abolished for colluding with the enemy. So, I love that sentence. You just, yeah, don't need it. Abolish it. Get rid of it. This whole, <laughs> this whole republic. Well, before this whole piece of territory. Nah, get rid of it. There is also the lingering threat that Naples may rejoin the war at a critical moment to stab him in the back. So to secure his southern flank, Napoleon concludes a comprehensive peace treaty with Naples without bothering to consult the directory. <laughs> nice. It's actions like this that feed the whispers in Paris. This popular young general's ambition yep. seems limitless. Might he not one day prove a dangerous political player? But such talk will be moot if Napoleon fails in Italy. That autumn, as Austrian troops march once more to the relief of Mantua, he will face his most skilled opponent yet, Weltzugmeister Josef Alvinci. Okay. The first man to defeat Napoleon Bonaparte in battle. Fascinating. Cool. A big ah. thank you. And there we have it. Until the next time, part four here. I love these little teasers. Don't spoil it. If you don't know the ending for this, don't spoil it. It gets better. Don't worry. Thank you very much for joining me on this one. This was a bit of a shorter one. Usually I like to pause and add a little bit more commentary on these things. But as I said before, this is totally new for me. So I'm learning all about this. I'm learning with you guys. And thank you very much for joining me for all these videos. Take care. Stay tuned on this channel. Hit subscribe. And then there will be even more Napoleon videos. I got a whole bunch more coming up. So take care. See you in the next one.